Welcome to the EKG Guy. I'm glad you're joining us if this is your first time. In this lecture, what I wanted to do is go over the cardiac anatomy and conduction system of the heart. We'll first look at some of these things and then we'll close out by looking at some of these take home points and go through them together to ensure that we're getting all the key points from this lesson. So briefly, when we look at the heart, what we see here is that it's situated in the center of the chest. Here's your chest cavity. So here's your chest cavity and you have your heart sitting here in the center of it. Up here you have your right atrium, okay? Your left atrium, your right ventricle sits most anterior and your left ventricle on the left side, mostly posteriorly uh, in the chest cavity. So notice that it's in the center of the chest, okay? And directed leftward, so towards the left. So this would be the left, this would be the right. So leftward and then inferiorly directed. So remember those points. Now let's just look at some of the aspects of the heart. So we have our right atrium, which we've mentioned, that's this portion here, okay? So the right atrium is the, there's two atria of the heart, and this is one of them, and then you will have the left atrium. This is the left side of the body, this would be the right side of the body, okay? Think of this as the top, and then you have the bottom, okay? So when we say this is the right atrium, and the left atrium. You also have two ventricles. This is the right ventricle and then the left ventricle. Okay, be, go be going between the right side of the heart, between the right atrium and the right ventricle is what we call the tricuspid valve and from the right ventricle, okay? And going outwards, you have an artery. This is the pulmonary artery and this is the pulmonic valve. So hopefully that makes sense. Now as blood goes out to the lungs, so as blood uh, we'll go through the circulatory system shortly, but as blood goes out to the lungs, it'll come back to the left side of the heart and pass through this mitral valve to the left ventricle and eventually make its way out this way through the aorta to the rest of the body. And that's essentially systemic circulation. So when we look at the circulation, we'll just enlarge this here to get a better idea. So notice we have our heart here in the center of the cavity. Here's our heart, okay? This would be the right side of the heart where blood is returning, and this would be the left side, okay? So blood is coming to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, which is this portion here, and then goes out here. This is deoxygenated blood that comes to the lungs and then makes its way back to the left side of the heart, as we mentioned. And then from the left atrium, past that mitral valve, and through the left ventricle, out the aorta. So here's your aorta, and then you have arteries that are taking it to all different areas of the body through the systemic circulation. So notice you have circulation going to the arms, okay? It goes to the head and brain, as well as the trunk, as well as the kidneys, the pelvis, and legs, and so forth. And that's where that gas exchange occurs at the capillary level, where you have oxygen taken up by those, uh, those cells, and then you have CO2 that is exchanged and taken back to the right side of the heart in which that deoxygenated blood comes back to the right side of the heart and makes its way back to the lungs to be oxygenated. And so the key point here is not really to know all these different aspects, but notice that this is a one closed loop system. And that's an important aspect of this blood circulatory system. So this is the circulatory system. Now, the last thing I want to close with was now that we know the anatomy of the heart, can we also learn the conduction system of the heart, okay? So we've taken a look at the anatomy, okay? How it sits in the chest, some of the basic features, the circulatory system, and now let's take a look and touch a bit here on the conduction system, okay? And as we start learning EKGs, this will be the key feature that we end up uh, spending most of our time on, okay? So just to recap, some of our things, so we'll use different color. Here's the right atrium, okay? You have your right ventricle, your left atrium, and your left ventricle. So same thing that we've been going over. Now that's the anatomy of the heart. Now there's also the electrical component of it. And this is where we spend our most of our time focusing on EKGs. So in the right atrium, so near the superior vena cava, which is this portion here, this is the inferior vena cava. They're bringing deoxygenated blood to the right side of the heart. Up in the right atrium, you have what's known as the sinoatrial node, okay? This is also 
referred to as the sinus node. So sinus node, you may hear it called the SA node or the sinoatrial node. And from that sinoatrial node, here is where the normal conduction starts. This is where normal conduction starts in the heart. And what happens is from there, you have these, this is essentially a highway system in which impulses travel through. So imagine you have an impulse that starts here at the SA node, the sinus node. It's going to travel through these internodal pathways. Okay, so notice that you have these internodal pathways that are coming about here. And they're all leading to what's called the AV node. So that's the AV node there situated in the middle. And you have, <clears throat> they're depolarizing that right side of the atrium. So this is atrial depolarization of the right side. And you also get some interatrial conduction to the left atrium through what's called this Bachmann bundle. Okay, so you have these internodal pathways, you have the Bachmann bundle, all working to depolarize the top part of the heart, the atria. So this is, this is the conduction system of that. And where we start to see issues with atrial block or intraatrial blocks tend to be within maybe the Bachmann bundle or areas uh, throughout the atria conduction system. So here in the internodal pathways, you have an anterior, a middle, and a posterior pathway, okay? So after you get to this AV node, notice that it's also in the right atrium, you go to what's called the His bundle, this short aspect here. And that area, including this AV node, is known as the AV junction, okay? And from that His bundle, this is where you start to go down to depolarize the ventricles. You have the right ventricle that is essentially being depolarized by the uh, what comes down this, what's called the right bundle branch. So you have the impulse coming down to the right side, down this right bundle branch. It comes to these Purkinje fibers, the ventricular Purkinje fiber network. And from these Purkinje fibers, it sends and depolarizes the cardiomyocytes within that right ventricle. And in the left side, on the left ventricle, you have a similar thing that happens. So from the His bundle, comes down the left bundle branch. And not shown here, you have what's called a left anterior fascicle that innervates the anterior and superior portions of the left ventricle. And then you have a left posterior fascicle that innervates the inferior and posterior aspects of that left ventricle. Again, from those fascicles, you have a Purkinje fiber network that then goes and innervates the individual cardiomyocytes. So let's just review the conduction system starting from the top and we'll write it out here so that uh, we start to get the flow of it. So starting up in the right atrium, we have what's called the SA node or sinus node. And let's say that the impulse normal conduction starts from there. And from that, you have these internodal pathways that are innervating that right atrium, okay, in the atria. You also have what's called the Bachmann bundle that's providing innervation to the left atrium. When you start to learn about interatrial blocks, that's where something you'll learn is effective. And so from there, they come to what's called the AV node. Again, also in the right atrium. And from the AV node, you have the His bundle. And this is where you're starting to get, when, you, when we think of AV blocks, think of this is where that tends to uh, take place, okay? As we get through the His bundle, so this area here, AV blocks, and we think of it as the AV junction. After the His bundle, we go to the right side, and that goes to the right bundle branch and innervates the Purkinje fibers in the ventricular system on the right ventricle, and then to the cardiomyocytes. On the left side, we have the left bundle branch, right? And there's two main fascicles that we should be aware of, the left anterior, and left posterior fascicle. And from there, these bundle branches, the fascicles, all come and innervate a ventricular Purkinje fiber network. Okay, and from this uh, fiber network, it then spreads to the cardiomyocytes 
and that's how innervation within the heart takes place and how the electrical flow actually occurs in a normal a normal healthy sinus rhythm okay so that's kind of essentially what we want to know these are some of there's a lot of key aspects here so again let's just uh, highlight some of them so we'll highlight them in yellow okay so uh, some of these main ones remember the sinus node think of the AV node you have your his bundle okay you have the right bundle branch the left bundle branch essentially to the fascicles to the Purkinje network and the ventricles okay and then to the individual cardiomyocyte so just kind of go over that pathway and this is kind of something that will help you and notice where everything is located because knowing the anatomy and that's how we looked at it initially is going to be super important as we uh, move forward in additional lessons whether it's related to the EKG or not okay so hopefully that makes sense there all right so just a few other points here that we should cover uh, and that really has to do with the intrinsic rates of different aspects of here okay so we said that there's what's called a conduction pathway and within this conduction pathway these areas have different intrinsic rates and these intrinsic rates are, will be important because they're very helpful as we start to look at rhythm analysis differentiating between different rhythms and so forth and so when we look at this we'll look at adult patients so we'll start at adults okay our focus you know we have a, a number of courses for pediatrics but we'll focus on the adult population here and so when we look at the sinus node the intrinsic rate here of the sinus node that we should think about is between 60 and 100 beats per minute in adults okay so think of that in that range and as you get lower as meaning as you go down through this conduction system the rates start to slow down so imagine here is 60 to 100 beats per minute okay and we'll see as we go through here that they will slow down and you may wonder why that's the case and we'll get to that point as we start to get some of these points down so in the atria the rates start to get a little lower okay so in maybe the atria you can think of it say between 50 and 60 beats per minute maybe as high as 55 to 60 or so forth somewhere in that range and when you think of the AV node in this AV junctional area you should think of it between 40 and 60 beats per minute and then in the ventricles down here okay uh, these areas have an intrinsic rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute okay so as we get lower okay so the AV junctional region we said 40 to 60 beats per minute and then down here 20 to 40 beats per minute and these are general ranges that you should just keep in mind okay there are many more nuances but that we won't get into it here but those are the three things for just beginning that you should be aware of these specific ranges so notice as it, the rates go down as you get through the conduction system rates are slowing and this is the intrinsic rate so what does this intrinsic rate that we keep talking about means well what happens in the sinus node is essentially these nodes will fire impulses within that range and we're saying that the range a normal range that those impulses will occur is between 60 and 100 beats per minute in adults so when we look at sinus rhythms normal sinus rhythm in an adult has a range uh, a rate a atrial rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute okay and what happens you can imagine if this sinus node fails okay where it cannot conduct at that rate or uh, keep up at 60 beats per minute there's what's called safety nets okay or backup pacemaking cells that help take over so say that the sinus nodes couldn't fire at that expected rate well what happens is you have maybe different atrial cells okay in the atria that then try to pick up for it or maybe in the AV junction say that there's nothing in the atria that can fire at all so the AV junction starts to fire say maybe at 45 beats per minute okay so it'll start to take over what we call pacemaking function of the heart and if this AV node were to fail as well okay maybe it couldn't conduct at that rate in that case you may have a ventricular rate or a ventricular rhythm that takes over we call it an escape rhythm at a range between this 20 and 40 beats per minute so say the sinus node fails 
the AV node also fails, you may have a ventricular escape rhythm that occurs around 30 beats per minute or so. Okay, and those are safety nets that are put in play uh, within the heart, just like different areas of the body. So just to recap, when you think of you know more of the atria, so the sinus node, the AV junction, and the ventricles, these are the main brackets you should keep in mind, 60 to 100, and this is the rates and the beats per minute. And at the AV junction, I want you to think of a rate between 40 and 60, and then the ventricles 20 and 40 beats per minute. So that's the general flow, and hopefully that's making, making sense for now. Now let's review some of those take home points here before uh, we close up. So I'll just kind of get us back to our home base here. All right, so hopefully this is helping you so far. Now the first take home point that I thought would be uh, relevant for us uh, was one, what is the most anterior portion of the heart, okay? And so it's hard to tell in uh, this view here, but it is certainly the right ventricle. So the right ventricle sits here over the heart. This is the right ventricle, it's the most anterior portion of the heart. You may say, why is that important? with regard to EKGs, well, as we look at different leads and where they're placed, this will be a critical aspect. The second thing that I thought was important is that the heart is equal to, uh, this is a certain number, chamber pump, okay? Well, it is a four chamber pump, okay? Those four chambers are two atria, the right atrium and the left atrium, and then the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So it's a four chamber pump, one closed system as we saw here when we looked at the circulatory system. And lastly, you know, a few of the things that we talked about were and focused on are, were the conduction system. So this one has here, if you can fill in the blanks, the impulses in a normal pathway would start at the SA node or the sinus node, and they would go to these internodal pathways, right? That would include the, the anterior, middle, the posterior internal pathways, the Bachman bundle, and then from there, where would they go? They would go to the AV node. Okay, so the SA node, these internodal pathways in the atria, to the AV node, to the His bundle, and then they would go to the bundle branches, the left bundle branch that has two main fascicles that we should be aware of, and maybe research showing an additional one, but know those, the left anterior and posterior fascicles, and it's important when we look at vesicular blocks and also the right bundle branch, okay, innervating that right uh, ventricle. And then from there, it goes through the Purkinje fibers and the cardiomyocytes. And just recall that the left anterior fascicle innervates the anterior and superior portions of the left ventricle, okay? So that's the left anterior fascicle, the left posterior fascicle, innervates the inferior and posterior aspects of the left ventricle, okay? And the right bundle branch essentially does that, that whole right ventricle there. So that's the conduction system. Now we said, what is the main pacemaker of the heart, okay? And this is essentially something that should be an important thing to keep in mind, and one that we tried to highlight quite a bit, and that's where the impulse essentially begins. There's different areas within that, we call that highway system, that conduction pathway that can take over pacemaking function, but the main one to be aware of is that sinus node. So the SA node up in the upper right atrium near the superior vena cava is the pacemaker, the normal pacemaker of the heart. And finally, the fifth take home point that I think you should be aware of is that these backup systems exist not only through the body and the different organs, but also within the conduction system itself. Whereas if higher levels fail, there are backup pacemakers that can take over pacemaking function of the heart. And so they serve as a safety net. So we have these safety nets within uh, the conduction system that help provide assurance that if areas fail, that those others could help take over. Now there's a lot of things that you should, you'll end up learning is that these backup systems are not the best, okay? And they're not sufficient, especially if you have a, a backup system coming from somewhere in the ventricles, well, it might not provide enough uh, 
the patients may maybe become symptomatic because you're not getting enough cardiac output. So, or maybe you have hemodynamic dynamic collapse. And so sometimes these backup pacemakers that exist in the ventricles are not reliable and patients often need, need a uh, pacemaker, a permanent or temporary pacemaker placed uh, until they can get that permanent one uh, placed. Okay. So that's, that's about it. You know, the main things here, again, looking at the cardiac anatomy, know the anatomy. Okay. We saw that the right ventricle sits most anterior, know the basic areas of the heart, the four different chambers, the circulatory system. And then the main focus here will be on the conduction system. And that's where most of our time will be spent as we see. The anatomy of the heart will be super important as we start to link these things together. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Mm -hmm.